the trial was, it was pretty hard for me to sit through it. And um, I was praying that the jury do the right thing, and they did. And um, I feel pretty good about it. But now we're waiting for the sentence. But um, even though I feel pretty good about the victory, or I should say the guilty, that they, but it still wouldn't bring my son back. I'm still sad. So. So what was it like every day facing Conrad Nolan? It was hard facing him. And I really don't think that um, he intended ha what happened to happen, but he knew better. And if he had have been there, when Michael stopped breathing, Michael would be alive today. And so he's the cause of Michael's death. And, and I don't think he intended for it to happen, but he was negligent. He was taking a chance, and he knew better. Oh, there were certain days that I didn't go to court. Um, a few of those days I had to go to the doctor, you know, and um, I had doctor's appointments. But other than that, I tried to make all the days that I could. A few days I rested. <laughs> and um, it must have been hard on you. It was very hard. When you had to do anything that you heard in court that surprised you about, about the case, about Michael? Uh, what surprised me is um, the propofol that they were using, the doctor was using. And um, another thing, too, I didn't know that Michael had that problem not sleeping. And um, the verdict was read. Um, I can't say I felt good, and I did, because if they had said not guilty, I don't know what I would have done. But um, to be truthful, I thought about his mother because I'm a mother and I know how she must have felt. But I feel even worse because I'll never see my son again, but no matter what. And then too, after they read the guilty verdict, I got the thinking, I said, at the most he can get four years and he might not get four years, so I what don't- What should he get? What, what in your opinion would be a fair sentencing for him? I don't know. All I know is Michael's gone forever. And in four years or two years or whatever they give him, he'll be free to walk the streets again. I, I can't compare. You can't even compare that to somebody's life gone and another man is getting only a few years. When you heard the tape, that Murray had recorded of Michael. How did, how did that make you feel? I was really upset when he played that tape because that was way before Michael passed. And I was wondering what was on his mind? What was he planning? So right there I thought, this is not a good man. He's planning something. How did it make you feel to know that there, there was a photo presented in court of your son that was exploitive of the situation, but it, it was all... Just different. show him, um, well, the DA had told us that not to come to court that day because that's what they were going to do. DA told us not to come to court on the day that they showed uh, my son's picture um, when after he had deceased. Uh, I thought it was unnecessary to show it because everybody knew he had passed why they did that, I don't know. How do you feel about Murray now going forward and, and creating a documentary or, or speaking about his experience? I don't think he should be able to do that. I don't think the judge should have allowed that. Um, I don't know if he's trying to make money off of it, but I don't think he should be able to make money off of something that he had done that terrible. No, I don't think Murray should be allowed to to release anything or 
any statement or any documentary um, during that time that he was Michael's um, doctor because he's done a terrible thing uh, uh, neglecting Michael and letting him pass. And why should he um, gain from it? Why should he make money? Only one thing, he neglected Michael and it was negligence on his part and no matter how you cut it, he's guilty. And I don't know what he's trying to prove. So he's guilty. Um, do you feel at all, is there a weight off your shoulders? Do you feel victorious in this at all? Or do you think that there's more to this and more people should be responsible for this? I can't answer that question because um, I don't know. I think about it all the time, and I and I hear other people say things, but um, people will talk. I don't know what to say about that. I'd rather not answer how I feel, and if, even if it was how I feel, I'd just be speculating. I don't want to do that either. So now that he's in handcuffs and, and behind bars, um, what what do you feel you are, you're left with now? Michael's not coming back. Just because he's been sentenced, handcuffed, and taken to jail, I'm still left without a son. I look at his children every day and I think about how they must feel. Um, How's the rest of your family doing through all this? They're doing, they're doing well. Yeah. Does everyone feel good about what happened or? Do they feel that there's more work to be done? Um, I have some of my children think there's more work to be done. There's more to it than meets the eye. And um, then some of them are just, even though they might feel that way, they're not expressing their feelings, you know, or their thoughts to the world. And we'll never know the real answer. I don't think we will. I'm not sure. How are Michael's children doing through all this? They're doing fine. They, um, the we don't doing talk fine. about it. The kids are doing fine. <laughs> we don't uh, talk about it with them, and they don't, uh, I don't think they want to talk about it either. So one day we will be able to talk about it. They're obviously aware that you got up every morning to go to court. Oh yeah, they know when we get up in the morning, go to court. Before we leave, they're up getting ready to go to school. And uh, they told me, we know you're going to court this morning. And then... Um, are, are Michael's children offering you any encouragement or support during this difficult time? Well, um, <clears throat> on the day that the sentence was, I think Paris... Um, was the one that came over and gave me a big hug. And and she said, just, I know Grandma. And she went to her room. And um, that's about it. And I think um, they found, they heard that he was guilty, that he was found guilty. So, so they know, I mean, Michael's children are obviously very smart, very keen children. They know about the verdict. Yes. Have they express any emotion to you about it at all? No. Paris, uh, the children haven't expressed any emotions about the, the verdict or anything to me. And I think they understand. One day we'll be able to talk, to, talk about it more. But right now, um, I think everyone's a little emotional about it. And so um, it'll come with time when we can talk about it more, because I don't like to talk about it either. What was the relationship like between the children and Conrad Murray? Um, they don't talk about that too much. He was, he was hired as their doctor. You know, whenever they get a cold or something, he would come to the house and um, wait on them. And that's about all they knew about him. But they, they thought he was a good man and a nice man, which I wouldn't doubt it. But 
it was just unfortunate that he didn't do his duty. He neglected their father, and his father passed because of that. And that's what the the case is all about. Why do you think Dr. Murray would call a 12-year-old prince up to the room to show him Michael, his father, on the bed? Had passed. I think the reason Dr. Murray called Prince up to that room to show him that his father had passed is because this is what I think, and I don't like to talk about what I think because I really don't know. But I think he was guilty, and he wanted Prince to come up to see that he was trying to survive their father. And when Prince came up, uh, he put him on, the father was already on the bed, so he tried, he did CPR. He's a cardiologist. He knows that you have to do CPR on a hard surface. Prince had told me that when he went up, at first he didn't even recognize that it was father there because his face was so swollen and his hands were swollen. He said, it, and so evidently, the two minutes that Dr. Murray talked about that he had just gone to the bathroom was a lie. It takes more than two minutes to swell you up for, for a person to get swollen up. So evidently, Michael had been dead for a while. And how do you think that has affected Prince? It did. It really did. It has an effect on him now. It has an effect on Prince. Pardon? It, it has, seeing his father passed away in his own home has affected Prince. You know what? I don't want to talk about that because even Paris, but they talked about it at, in court. Some because even they called, Paris went in and saw him too. And it's a shame that he had to, I don't know what, what they were thinking to let those children come in and see Michael like that. It has a, it had, now that has an effect on him, really. What do you have to say to Murray then? To, to have put your grandkids through that unnecessarily. I didn't understand the question. What did you say? What would you have to say to Murray, to, to Dr. Murray, who put your, your grandchildren in a situation? Through that. Like that? Yeah. I'm upset with him. I'm upset with Dr. Murray when he called Prince up. And then later, they Paris and, and uh, I don't know about Blanket, but uh, they talked about Paris also went in and saw him like that and how she starts screaming and then she was bawling up on the floor just crying her heart out. I think that was wrong of him to do that. And what he, they should have done was call 911 instead of spending all that time doing that. But I think they knew that Micah was gone and I don't know why they did all the things they did before they called 911. I think if they had him called 911 when he first discovered Michael, he would have been dead long before. Even paramedics couldn't have done anything. That's how I feel, and I shouldn't talk about what I think. But you it all... You should talk about what you think, because everyone wants to know how you... That's how I think. I think... Um, I think... I, I think Dr. Murray was just negligent. And I think he was on that phone longer than what he said he was. I think he, um, he probably felt he could have fell asleep, but he was talking to these girlfriends of his that were, all of them were strippers. We found that out in the preliminaries. They called them all into court and they were all strippers. So he went a lot to strip clubs and he might have left Michael to go there for a few, for an hour or two. You never know what happened. I shouldn't even say that. Just speculation. But, um... And so do you think Michael, when he hired Dr. Murray, um, what do you think was going through his mind in terms of not, you know, being with a doctor who's obviously not taking good care of him? Why do you think he would... I don't think he... I don't think Michael would have hired Dr. Murray if he didn't trust him. I think he put his trust in him. He thought he would be watching over him. Have 
you met Dr. Murray prior to? No. Have you heard of him? I heard of him through um, the babysitter Grace. Sorry, we have to do that over. It's okay. You want to pick that up? Okay. So, um, I heard of Dr. Murray. I heard of Dr. Murray um, through the nanny Grace. She had told me um, that about this doctor that Michael had. Whenever the children would get a cold or anything like that, Dr. Murray would be the one to come to the house and um, and and treat the children. And that's my only thing. I never met him until the day that Michael died, and I don't think I was, I don't know if I was, I can't remember. Well, I don't remember anything about that day. That was a hard day in my life when I went to the hospital. And I saw this man prancing, going, not prancing, but walking up and down. I didn't know who he was until, I don't know if my nephew asked or what, but he said, that's Dr. Murray. That's all I know. That's all I met when I met him then. A year, if I think, look back and think about this a year from now, I don't think it will never end it with me because there's not a day that passed that I don't think about my son. It's not a day that passed that tears don't fall. I'm not saying Dr. Murray intended for this to happen. I know he didn't, because he knew what he had to. But he was negligent, and you don't tr be negligent with, when somebody's life is involved. Dr. Murray's still here. Whether he do four years, one year, or two years, his mother can look in his face and say, I love you, son, or I can't. So it would never be over with me.